Okay, Bogdo. You know, I fucking knew you were gonna go there. <laughs> Bitch, I've read you like a book so many times, I've already worn out the damn pages. So, everybody. Y'all know this hoe has an OC. Madame Boodle over here is Riddle self-actualized. You know, a, a far cry from who Riddle is. Someone who's as dishonest as a shoppy sale and then visited less by men than a women's bathroom. With the same kind of zeal that you possess when you look up at the night sky at the burning rocks to confirm whether or not you do need that 15th espresso shot. Your caffeine consumption isn't impressive. It's sad, and this is an intervention. In your coffee-induced delusions, you immediately grasp to the thought that I wasn't being self-aware. As if every little bit of critique was a window into my dark, dank soul. Not everything's a little cry for help, Sappho Freud. And you know what? Let's get one thing straight. Because you obviously have a tough time convincing people you are. I don't hate this movie. And especially not because it hits home too hard. You want to know what I respect the most about this movie? It's its ending. After everything in the story is said and done, our characters have traveled through a multitude of multiverses, resolving countless storylines, even ones that we weren't witness to in the first place. At the end, we're confronted with the closest thing that everywhere has to a thesis statement, family. We end up getting a climax that tracks both in text and outside of it. A family that learns so much, putting everything they can into keeping another one of themselves whole. But even after the epiphanies reach, the hugless embraced, and taboos are brushed away, things aren't fully resolved. Hell, they're not only left unresolved, they end up throwing the idea of a resolution completely out the window. Pain simply isn't something that concerns itself with the rules of input and output. You can't just do a right to overwrite a wrong. There's no hurt quotient that you can equalize by dumping love and understanding onto in order to fix things. We humans brandish our scars, ruminate in angst, hold on to grudges, even completely past the realm of sensibility at some points. We are flawed, and so when we are slighted, we react imperfectly. We not only find it difficult to forgive at times, in many instances, we find it impossible to. There are no magic words to cover up the ones that you said in spite, no number of gifts that can blanket a history of selfishness, and sometimes even all the quality time in the world isn't enough to make up for a whole lifetime of absence. And it's sentiments like that, the realest and darkest parts of the movie, that I, ironically, think shine the brightest. Reality is sad, living is suffering, existence is pain, and that's wonderful. There's always this profound beauty that is present when something makes us uncomfortable. And there's nothing more profoundly beautiful than the idea that nothing matters. That we, our actions, and the world that we perform them in are so cosmically insignificant. Everything, everywhere, all at once. The essence of this film is every thing. As in everything you are aware and unaware exists is too much. Too much for our eyes to perceive, for our ears to process, and for us to bear. When there's so much going on in your life, the only place that feels right to look at is within yourself. And what you'll find staring back at you is the emptiness that's festered through all of it. Nothing matters, so why should we be hurt? Nothing matters, so why force myself to love this flick? Nothing matters, so why allow ourselves to feel any pain? Because at the end of the dark void that the trials and tribulations of the day-to-day -day lead you towards, what's left to smile about? If you wake up every day and find yourself unsatisfied with the body that you have, the bed that you woke up in, the roof that you're under, and the life that you lived, when unhappiness becomes your default, and apathy is the luxurious escape away from it, at the end of the day, nothing works at the way it should, and there's too much of it that works that way. All we can do is resign ourselves to it, I think. I don't know why I don't love this film. It's a masterpiece. It's thought-provoking. It's a unique thought in a universe of infinite possibility that's endlessly replicating beyond infinitude. In my search for answers, rushing to a satisfying conclusion, all I'm confronted with is a wall of even more questions. But one surfaces above all the noise at the moment. Why can't I just enjoy things?